so our last part of our conversation, we're coming towards the end now, okay. is our seven quick questions, which is seven quick questions for seven quick answers that we're asking all of our participants in our conversations. Okay. So it's sort of first thing off the top of your head or, you know, if you okay. want to go into depth, fine. Question one, what is the one thing you wish you had known when you began your career? Oh, God, I could have got a quick answer to that. Um, I suppose I wish I had thrown myself into it with more vigour earlier on. I think I grew into the job and became very committed to it. I suppose I maybe the first three or four years um, I, I could have maybe throw myself in with more determination and concentration. And then you wouldn't have missed the that's ones that you haven't had time to record because you've retired. That, yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's the first time I've ever admitted that. There you go. <laughs> uh, what is your favourite film or book about or featuring archaeology or heritage historic environment? <laughs> Are there any films about that? Well, uh, well, it's going to be Indiana Jones then, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. That hat, okay. That, 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 hat and that whip just reminds me of every, every regional archaeologist I've ever met. <laughs> Great. Uh, what site or find from anywhere in the world would you wish you'd had the chance to draw? Oh, no, that's a good one. From anywhere in the world. And, you know, not, oh. it doesn't have to have been found in your lifetime. No, yeah. I suppose yeah. I, would, I would love to have a chance to go and do some of the Viking Norse sculpture in the homelands. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. What profession other than your own would you like to have attempted? Oh, if I wasn't going to do what I did, I would probably have gone into doing <laughs> tree surgery and lumberjack because okay. I seem to be forever. I seem to be forever chopping down trees and planting new ones. <laughs> What's the strangest location you have had to record at? or the strangest items you've had to record? Okay, right, well, th well this is right, this one also has a little bit about an earlier question about um, brushes with danger and whatever oh, yes. else. We, the Royal Commission published a volume on the toll booths and townhouses of Scotland back yeah. in the 1990s, I think it was, and I was very heavily involved in doing that. And one of the things that we recorded, some of these buildings had some very nice and quite early 16th, 17th century bells. And these bells had inscriptions, for want of a better term, round them, um, usually in Latin, usually put on saying um, the bell right who had cast it and the date and maybe the, the, the borough that had commissioned it. And it was applied, it was almost a bit like, so you've got this brass bell and it's almost like brass tablets from um, Scrabble. So uh -huh. a little cast letter, um, which is then like soldered on in a line going round the bell, sometimes near the top, sometimes near the rim, sometimes with added decoration. And I caught a glimpse of one of these and said, we should record these. These are lovely. They are very pictorial. And you, if you photograph something that's in the round, you know, you're only getting a bit of it. Why don't we do a developed drawing and I'll figure it out and draw it? And everybody said, yeah, good idea. So I think it was actually in Fife. I think it was Falkland Townhouse. Climbed up into the bell tower. Climbed up the frame that holds the bell. So I'm now standing with one foot on a timber to the left of the bell and one foot on a timber to the right of the bell and there's a big drop below me yep. standing there and I'm no busy measuring and drawing this thing tablet by tablet and all of a sudden I heard this whirring noise and it was the clock <laughs> coming up to midday <laughs> and I had to stand there whilst this bell struck 12 uh, chimes um, <laughs> I was right beside it and you know it's like I had a data board in a hand and a measuring tape and a pencil 
So it was like I, there was always something in my teeth and something in each hand, and yeah. there was no there was no option of putting my fingers in my ears, basically. <laughs> so that has to be the oddest sensation. And at that point, I thought, right, you got to get this done before one o'clock, yeah. uh, before the damn thing goes off again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, question six: What is the one common myth about the Picts or early medieval sculpture that you would like to debunk? Uh, a common myth. Oh God, there's so many. Um, this is, is it the ginger beers and the tartan trousers? Or? Uh, well, listen, I've, I've probably alienated half the membership of the society already. Um, <laughs> let's go for the other half. Um, <laughs> uh, particular myth to debunk. Right, OK, there is one thing. Um, the symbols break down into two general groups. One group are very clearly identifiable things, yeah. namely the animals, yeah. and they're very, very clear which animals they are. You know, the wolf, the bull, the boar, the snake. You can tell the snake's an adder because of the V zigzag going down it. Eagles, you can tell some of them are sea eagles and some of them are golden eagles because some of them have got bald legs and some of them have got feathery legs. Yeah. Very, very clear. Then you've got other items like a mirror and a comb that are very identifiable. And then you have the geometric patterns, the geometric designs. And for some people, they are adamant. And again, I think this is something that comes from scholars in the 1960s. The geometric symbols are all rep represent things, but they've just become stylized over the time. Um, and so, you know, you end up with some bizarre things. I would debunk that. I'm pretty certain anyone that can carve and stone and define and a golden eagle could represent a chariot clearer than the notched rectangle in Zed Road. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I'm debunking that one. Yeah. Sorry, Graham. <laughs> OK, our last question and our quick questions. What is your must visit archaeological site or museum? Obviously, aside oh. from the Elgin Museum. <laughs> it could be anywhere in the world, any subject that's matter. Oh yeah. gosh, what is a favourite? I don't know. It, it, there are so many of them, mm -hmm. and so. But at the moment, um, was it's fresh in my mind, and it was a very positive experience working there. Govan Old. Um, okay. uh, it's another site that gets overlooked because it's not Pictish, so yeah. all the Pictish fans don't go. Uh, and because it has this reputation of being not nearly as refined as the Pictish carving, it's seen as the poor cousin, but it is actually a phenomenal uh, assemblage of sculpture. And the folk that run it are brilliant. Um, so whenever the all clear is sounded and we're allowed to go back out, I implore yeah. everybody, go, go visit Governold. Right, excellent. Thank you very much. You've got through our seven questions in one piece. That's great. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think after this conversation, we should be asking uh, when your memoirs are coming out. It's a job for you in retirement is to get that. And I've got a feeling that our uh, audience are going to be watching the video and got Google on the other monitor trying to find all of the sites and stones and things that you yeah. mentioned along the way. And, you know, hopefully we'll get people out and about looking at things as well. So. I want to just thank that, you very that's, much. That's what to do is have Cadmore up and running and any site that's mentioned. Oh, obviously, the HDR you, as well. Has come. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, but with the, with the exception <laughs> of, of Govan, because I, I, the lockdown prevented me from scanning and cataloguing all my Govan yeah. work. Um, it's upstairs in the portfolio, uh, and I'm just waiting to be allowed back in back to in. John Sinclair House as a guest. Yeah. Um, whenever that's safe to do so, uh, to get that scanned and catalogued. But everything else, um, yes, your your yeah. your local sites and monuments record or Canmore, and you yeah. can have, have a Explore look at it. Yeah. drawings on Canmore yeah. and uh, find out how to get to some of these sites. And uh, yeah. you know, not all of them are inside, so no. you know, we're in lockdown, but we are allowed out now and again. So mm. hopefully, people will go out and, and enjoy. It. And yeah. yes, I can only say thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I've learned some new things about you, and uh, I think everybody's mm. going to really enjoy uh, this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. It's been a pleasure.